Okay, I already introduced the whole, I, I gave you in the last lecture, I gave you an overview of the energy in the cell. And where the energy comes from, it comes from the sun and how it flows into plants and then into animals, photosynthesis, respiration, mitochondria, chloroplasts. Okay, went over the basic concepts of how bonds are involved in energy. Now today, we're going to look at section 4-1 in your book, which focuses on ATP. Now your book kind of does a little intro as well, just like I did, to the cell and energy. But there's this compound called ATP that, that the book focuses on at the beginning. And the reason is that ATP is used as kind of a, it's kind of a middleman. It's a compound that's going to show up again and again and again in photosynthesis and respiration. Right? So this whole chapter, this is one of the kind of chemicals that you guys need to know about because it's going to keep popping up through the whole chapter. So I think it's a good idea to start like the book does, focus on this compound so that you know what it is and how it works, and then you'll be better off uh, later on. So this ATP is called, this is short for adenosine adenosine triphosphate. And I'm going to take the time to kind of draw it for you here so that you can see what it is and, and what it does. Basically, it is a key chemical compound for energy storage and release in the cell. So let's look at exactly how this works here. So try to draw this in your book because your book has a kind of a similar picture, but it actually shows all the all the element symbols and stuff. I'm going to draw kind of a simplified version here that might be easier for you to remember and stuff. So we got a hexagon hooked up to a pentagon. And then hooked up to another pentagon down here. See how that works? Hexagon, pentagon, pentagon. And this pentagon is kind of lying flat. And then is the key part here. This is hooked up to three of these guys. I'm not going to ask you to draw this exactly on, you know, on the test or anything, but it's it's important for you to know its structure to know how it works. Okay, that's ATP. Now, <coughs> I think you can see why it's called triphosphate because it has three phosphate groups. Now this right here, this thing right here is is called adenine and this one is called ribose. And when you combine those two, you get adenosine. So it's kind of like the adenosine is combining the adenine and the ribose. This ose tells me that this is a kind of a sugar, like glucose, fructose, sucrose. It's a kind of sugar. Now, 
adenine, this little ene on the end, tells me that this is basically like an amino acid. But of course, they're combined together. So this thing is a pretty complicated compound. But the, the important thing to remember is these three phosphate groups sticking off the end. That is the key. Because here's what happens. Those can come off one at a time. Those phosphate groups can come off one at a time. And every time they do, they're going to their bonds are going to change, and that process is going to release energy. So this is like a li little compound that acts like a little machine that can store up energy and release energy. And it's used all over the place in the cell. When, when things need energy in the cell, this guy is coming to provide the energy. That's really how it works. Glucose, glucose does not go directly to your muscle fibers and make them contract. This guy is what makes the muscle fibers contract. Glucose is used to make this guy, and then this guy goes and makes the muscle fibers contract. So this is kind of, this is the actual kind of foot soldier, the one that's actually out there doing the stuff in the cell, right? It's usually not around for long because it's quickly being used up and then reproduced and used up and reproduced and stuff like that in the cell. So, how does it release energy? How does ATP release energy? <coughs> All right, let me show you. So, I'm going to redraw this. And if you want, you can continue this. If you've got space next to this ATP molecule, maybe you can. Uh, well, you know what? Let's do this so that you guys don't have to redraw that whole thing. Let's take this and we'll go like this, okay? Carry this around here. And we're gonna add something. We're gonna add water to it. Now if we add water, here's what's going to happen. Now, let me draw that water out so that you can remember what it is. It's a water molecule, it looks like that. It's got one oxygen and two hydrogen in it. And then there is a reaction that takes place. This isn't a very stable molecule, really, and it, it wants to break apart like this. Those, those bonds are not very tight. Those phosphate bonds are not very tight. So this thing is going to break down with the water. ATP reacts with water. And when it does, here's what you get. You get this stuff is all unchanged, so the basic body of the molecule is all the same. Okay, that's all exactly the same. Um, but here's what's going to change. Instead of three phosphates on the end now, I'm only going to have two. Like that. And I'm going to also get See, what happened is I broke off one of these guys. Um, <coughs> so I'm going to give you a minute to write that, to, to copy that all down, because the book does not show this reaction. And that is shows this molecule, it shows the ATP molecule, but it doesn't show you how it changes in the reaction. So ATP has those little five phosphates, reacts with water. What you look at? What? Which one? This one? signs because there's negative charges on those oxygens. So now here's the weird thing. In the in the introduction to energy that I that I gave last time, I said that 
energy is always produced when a bond forms. Okay? It always requires energy to break a bond. So here's the thing. Here's the problem I have with your book. Your, bond, your book says when that phosphate bond breaks and that phosphate comes off, that releases energy. That's too simplistic. Breaking a bond actually requires energy. So my question looking at this at ATP is, what bond is forming? What bond formed? And so let's see if we can figure that out. We know that we broke a bond. If I, if I look at these two, let's look at where the bond broke. We know that it broke right here. See what I'm saying? Because look at what's on there. There's still an oxygen on there. See that? So this thing it didn't break right here. It didn't break between the phosphorus and the oxygen unless it reformed right after it broke. That wouldn't make sense. So it didn't break there. This bond right here broke. And then what does that mean? That means that this is new. Where'd that come from? It came from the water. So for the phosphorus to break off, it lost its oxygen. So the phosphate is running around with its oxygen gone. One of its oxygens gone, right? Now where's it going to get that oxygen? It pulls it out of the water. The OH comes from the water. So it's when that OH from the water goes snapping onto the phosphate that the energy is produced. So there it goes, bang, there's your energy. Now, if you look into the details, it actually gets pretty complicated. But let me show you a little picture anyway. This website is a complicated uh, explanation of it. But if you look up there at that little picture, it shows you in action what's happening. See that? So the adenosine triphosphate at the top. This is the ATP when it's got all three. And here's a water molecule. See what happened? See the switch? That OH from the water switched and replaced on there. It's like its arm broke off right here, and so then it got a new arm. right there snapping onto that. You see that green arrow coming out of there? That's the energy from that. See, bang, here comes the energy from that bond snapping onto it. Now, here's the thing about ATP. The cool thing about ATP is this can go backward or forward. You can put energy into it and put the ATP back together again. And so it's kind of like it goes back and forth. You can store it up, and then you can release it. You can store it up, you can release it. And this is what the cell does over and over and over again. It's got all these ATPs and ADP. So this guy right here, this guy right here is called ADP. Why do you think it's ADP down there? What does the D stand for? It's because it's two, but what does the D stand for? Di. So it went from tri to di. Pretty simple, right? Triphosphate to diphosphate. And it's always, now let me just draw a little summary of, uh, of this. So instead of drawing this whole molecule, let's show it both ways. We go ATP plus H2O yields ADP plus HPO4 2 minus, that's that guy right there, plus H plus plus energy. write that down. Again, your book does not cover this process, this chem chemical reaction, and it just leaves it as kind of a black box, and it's just kind of misleading, too, so. This is back. ATP, ADP. Now, technically, you could go down to A. all the way 
way down to one phosphate. You take another one off, and you get more energy out of it. But I think, to tell you the truth, I think for the most part it just goes ATP, ATP, ATP. I don't think it always goes down to AMP, even though it could, because that would release more energy if it gave off that other phosphate. One way to think about why it does this, folks, if you want, and this might help you for the project for uh, assignment 15, is look at this. See those negative charges there? What are they going to do to each other? They're going to push each other away, right? So look at ATP. Three negative charges stacked right up on top of each other. It's almost like having three magnets neg north to north, north to north, right? They're wanting to push apart. So give them a chance, and that's going to spring off of them. You follow me? So that's, that's kind of what we're talking about here. And, uh, but here what I wanted, the reason I wrote this out is because I want to show you the reverse. And in reverse, because it can happen in reverse too, and we'll see both going on when we get into respiration and photosynthesis. In reverse, I just draw it backwards, just like I did before with respiration and photosynthesis. Energy plus H plus. What is this? What is this thing right here all about? H plus. You guys seen that before? Makes you think of something, doesn't it? When you see that, it's positive. That's true. It is the source of what? What? It is hydrogen. I'm thinking it starts with an A. I'm thinking of a word. Acidity. Acids contain H plus ions. Okay? Now, when we were talking about all the acid stuff back then in chapter two, I said there's a reason we focus on acids so much because they're so important biologically. This is one reason, folks, right here. The pH of your blood, the pH of your cells is very important. This is one reason. I mean, this thing is the key player in the whole energy budget, energy budget of your cell. Okay, what does this become? This simply becomes, whoop, oh, hang on, what did I do here? Did I do this right? Nope. Plus ADP makes ATP and more. So in this case, I'm absorbing energy, whereas I was making energy. What does it do? Well, this guy can come along to say, and your book does talk a little bit about this part. Um, let's say I have an enzyme. Some enzymes uh, require energy. Or we talked about active transport, for example. Enzymes, protein pumps for active transport. All sorts of different things that require energy. ATP comes along. And it kind of, they call it a coupled reaction. It will actually, like, sometimes, like, touch. It will join the enzyme or the protein and do a, a complete a reaction with it that releases this energy, kind of passing the energy to the, ener to the, the enzyme. It passes energy to the enzyme so that it can do its job. Maybe the enzyme's job is to break apart a sugar molecule or lactose or something like that. And maybe it needs energy to do that. So this thing will come along, touch the enzyme, pass its energy along, and bam. Okay? Or like I said, your muscle fibers, for example. The ATP is actually going to come in there, pass that energy 